Okay, so hello, good morning, everyone. I mean, morning for me, maybe not morning for you. Um, my name is Alyssa, and I'm going to be the panelist for this double degree huddle Ask Me Anything session. Uh, I'm just going to let you know now at the start that this meeting will be recorded. So if there was a question that was answered that you didn't quite hear or a part that you missed, um, you should be able to review the recording later. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so a bit about myself. Um, I'm in, I'm currently starting my fourth year of the math business double degree program. Uh, I am Waterloo based, if that wasn't already clear. Um, and, uh, and so I've decided to do a combinatorics and optimization minor at Waterloo with a computing option and a finance concentration on the Laurier side. Um, and then I guess something interesting about me. Um, oh yeah, so I play Quidditch uh, at Waterloo um, and we aren't the only school that has Quidditch. Um, actually, a lot of schools have Quidditch teams like Queens, um, McGill, uh, U of T, U Ottawa, like pretty big schools do Quidditch and we all get together and like there's a regionals and a nationals and all of that. Um, that's my fun fact and I will be plugging Quidditch uh, throughout this Ask Me Anything. Um, so just be be ready for that. Um, and so uh, feel free to submit any of your questions in the Q&A box um, as they come up and then I'll be answering them out loud. Um, but while you think of any questions, I have some preloaded ones um, that I've been assigned. So I'll start going through some of that and then um, just feel free to send in your questions in the Q&A box uh, if you have any, even if they're like super ultra specific. Looks like we have some low attendance so we can, uh, we can get pretty intimate here. Um, okay, so to start, um, how do I balance my social life with schoolwork? So double degree is definitely a pretty work heavy program. You're always kind of doing important classes. There's nothing that's super birdy in your first few years that you can take because of like minimal electives for the first little while. So balancing social life with school life, I guess, you just kind of have to be organized. So, and, and know where your priorities are. Um, so for me, that means at the start of every semester, I sit down, I go through all of the syllabuses, I figure out when are my assignments due, when are my exams, um, how, like, what's the level of involvement in each class? So, so what I mean by that is, do I need to be, um, reading the textbook, like every single week, um, uh, making detailed notes and things like that, or are the profs lectures going to be enough for me and just taking notes in the class like will that be enough for me and sort of feeling that out in the first week of classes um, to understand the expectations for school and then after that i'm able to say like okay so i know that i need to do this like on these days of the week i know i need to do this on these days of the week um so on these days i can make time for hanging out with my friends or going to the gym or going for a run um just kind of little things here and there um and obviously being able to work around and just setting aside a separate day or like few days that you just don't really want to do any schoolwork like that's all possible um definitely just kind of about being organized and doing your best to do that um so another question uh are there places where i can get involved with uw uh yes there are so many places and things you can do um, and things available to you at Waterloo, um, Quidditch being one of them. But if you're more, so there's there's kind of like two realms, um, not realm, but like there's the academic sort of ways to get involved in clubs that are like Axide Club or a Data Science Club or Women's and Computer Science, like um, those kind of clubs where they'll all host like resume review sessions, like that it's specific to this like area. Uh, or this field of interest, they'll host like how to ace like a data science interview sort of panels and sessions um, and, and really good stuff like academically. Um, but then there's also like a fun 
fun, more like social side of the club realm where it's pretty much just for fun. Like it's like Quidditch or um, there's cheese club where you just kind of get together and eat cheese. Um, what are some other ones? I know there's like salsa dancing club. Um, there's a lot of really cool clubs. Uh, probably one for each and every one of your interests. Um, if you go on wusa.com forward slash clubs, um, you'll 100% find something for you. Um, and if you want like a more athletic club, um, but you don't want like the commitment of like a varsity sport where it's like every day I got to wake up at like five in the morning um, and go to practice or whatever, um, you can do, you can go onto um, gowarriorsgo.com and they'll have a list of uh, athletic clubs as well for you to join if that's something you're interested in or in your uh, Okay, next question. And so if you have any questions that come up as well, just a reminder, drop them in the box if you like, um, and I will answer them. Um, so the other question I have is, what's taking online courses like? Is it hard? Any tips? So online courses, unpopular opinion for me, um, I've been really enjoying them. I just did uh, a term online for summer. Um, and so I had two Waterloo classes and three Laurier classes. And so Laurier and Waterloo have been doing their online classes differently um, from each other. So Laurier is pretty big on involvement and class participation and like not just online, like that's how they are um, like in general with their classes. So they typically have smaller class sizes, like. Um, there's a lot of conversation going on throughout the class and participation. And it sounds really scary at first. You're like, oh my God, I have to talk in a class. I've never done this before. I never wanted to do this before. Um, but that's what BU 111 is really good for the lab is it kind of gets you used to voicing your opinion, not being scared to share your ideas. Um, and then that kind of carries forward into the later classes that you do at Laurier where class participation is like huge for learning. Um, and it's, it's, it's really just enjoyable. And so taking that and making it just as good online, like Lori's done like a lot of work to be able to deliver that. And so they do their, uh, I would say, so all of my professors did do live Zoom lectures. And for two of the three professors, you were expected to attend the class and participate in the class. And so, one professor would do that, or they would both kind of use their breakout rooms. Um, so you go in, you kind of talk to other people um, based on the asynchronous kind of, so class prep work that you do before. Uh, and you kind of come in and you talk about it um, and then you submit uh, whatever asynchronous or synchronous work you did in class at the end of the lecture. Um, and then my other Laurier class that was live, you could attend whichever section you wanted. So the, for example, there was an 8.30 one and a 10 o'clock one every day, Monday to Thursday. So obviously everyone attended the 10 o'clock one. <laughs> um, that's not true, but um, so it was a little bit more flexible, but I find that, uh, or sorry, I'll talk about that in a second after. And so Waterloo's lectures, on the other hand, they were mostly pre-recorded. Um, sorry. Um, sorry, so Waterloo's uh, online classes, how they've been is they've been pre-recorded for the two that I had. I don't know, I can't speak to all of Waterloo classes, what they're gonna be like, but for the two that I had, they were pre-recorded um, and they were both third year level courses. So I took um, a combinatorics and optimization course called Network Flow Theory. And I took uh, a statistics course, Stat 372, um, which you'll all have to take. It's uh, linear modeling, introduction to linear modeling or something like that. And so both of those classes were pre-recorded lectures. Um, my graph theory prof was incredible. He um, he used his tablet and so would record like record the screen of his tablet while he was writing notes that we would write like ourselves in class. Um, and then he'd like sped it up and voiced over it. Uh, and so like teaching was just like learning from it was just like so good. Um, it was so clear and it was like a 10 minute lecture and he would have three or four a week. Um, but it was just so like convenient and I found it awesome because you can go back in the lecture if there's something you didn't quite understand. 
um, you're able to pause it, review it, like make sure you actually got the notes down correctly, like exactly as the prof is writing them. Um, and so, and so my sister's professor did something similar, except she had like her PowerPoint slides, but she just sort of went through them um, as she would in class and then also did um, some live like uh, writing on them and whatnot. And so um, what I, so the final, the overall question though, is how did I like online courses? Is it hard? Any tips? Um, I would say I didn't think it was hard. Uh, it's definitely an adjustment. Um, my tip would be to set a schedule for yourself. So with Laurier classes, it's really helpful because they're live. So you know that every day I have like a 10 o'clock class. Every day I have whatever this class is between this time. So having that as your base and then just saying, well, I'm already going to be doing lectures. Why not do my Waterloo lectures like at this time as well? Because you can do those whenever. Um, and so just setting that schedule for yourself has been like a huge help to me. And so some of my friends that are just in Waterloo, like not Laurie and had um, kind of most of their classes that were like that and didn't have too many live ones. Um, they were struggling to sort of keep up with their lectures regularly. They would be watching like 10 lectures, like all at once, just because they haven't been keeping up. So setting that schedule for yourself is like super, super key. Um, I'm just gonna have a quick drink of water. So reminder, feel free to submit questions um, if any come up. For anybody who just joined, my name is Alyssa. Um, I'm in 4A of double degree math and business, and this meeting is being recorded. Uh, okay. Another question. What's the process like for applying to co-op? All right, co-op. Um, so Waterloo has their job board called Waterloo Works um, that we're all in. And so when the term before you're supposed to be on co-op, so, for example, if I, I'm going to be on co-op in the winter, um, so I'll be applying for jobs in the fall. So around the second or third week of classes, Waterloo Works will open. And uh, you'll see like a whole list of all these different job opportunities. So um, it ranges pretty much any job you can think of, like it'll probably be there. Uh, and so you have. This term it's a bit different because of COVID, but if I remember, I think it's somewhere like two weeks, two or I think it's about two or three weeks, two weeks, um, and you just spend that time applying to um, whatever jobs you're interested in up to a limit of 50. Um, and then and then that closes and then. Um, interviews start happening and so then there's about a month of interviews so October becomes mainly interviews um, and then around the second week of November uh, what will happen is that rankings will come out and so uh, rankings being for all the interviews that you had uh, the employer will rank you one of three things so either they want they will give you the offer Either it will show that you have been ranked, but it won't tell you um, the actual like rank that you were like a oh, third choice, fourth choice, whatever. It'll just say that you've been ranked or it'll say not selected, um, which is a bummer, but that's OK. Uh, hopefully that's not the job you wanted. <laughs> um, and so then you have a day to sort of either accept your offer. Um, you can go into this is this is a good tip that I learned uh, last year. But you can go into if you if you receive no offers, but you've been ranked for a bunch of things, you can go into the um, center for uh, education, the co-op. It's called SICA. I don't remember what it stands for right now, but it's it's the main um, building for co-op where you're going to be doing all of your interviews, and they have like some. Um, Kind of guidance counselors or advisors there uh, for co op so you can go in and you can tell them your situation and they will tell you what you've been ranked and so you can go and you'll also see who the other interviewees were so who else was interviewed for that position and you can reach out to them via email 
um, and say, hey, are you thinking of taking this job? Because I've been ranked this, and if you don't take it, then I'll get it. So um, you can reach out and do all of that. And so you have about a day to do that, um, or a weekend, um, something like that. It depends on the day of the week. Uh, and then hopefully, um, the next day, it'll show your match results, and you'll either have a job, or you'll go into continuous round. Um, and so that's when the second kind of opening of all these other job applications come up. Um, and that's more of a continual basis. So this whole like first kind of two months of the term, um, you're going to be applying to jobs and doing interviews. And um, once like after that initial kind of opening, um, you apply to 50 jobs, it closes, more jobs don't get added. You're, it's, it's all just about interviews at that point. Um, and then that match results come out and then more jobs get posted and whatnot. And so if you um, weren't, you, if you didn't have a match, you go into continuous and you just kind of continuously every week there's rankings every week there's interviews it's just it's just ongoing um and people are always like scared of like going into continuous like oh my god what's going to happen but it's really not a big deal like there's a lot of really good jobs that are always out there um i've had some employers who just like missed the deadline to submit for main rounds so they're like darn like i'll just submit later like there's still really good jobs and even the employers that do um, go into main round if they didn't like any of the candidates they can not take anyone i'm pretty i think i'm I'm not sure but i think and they can just keep going into continuous or whatnot and interview more students um so that's kind of the co-op process uh i see a question came in what are the math assignments like um so good question they were they're a bit of an adjustment compared to past. Also, if um, there's uh, some something is happening outside of my building, if it's too loud, just uh, let me know and I'll close the door. But um, the math assignments, they were in a bit of an adjustment um, just because I think math itself was a bit of an adjustment from what I was used to. Um, and, and that meaning I wasn't used to doing the kind of proofs that you do at Waterloo, where it's not just kind of an equation and you need to like make one side equal the other side it's like that but with theorems um and so it's, it's a lot of like logic and thinking and connecting like pieces of the puzzle together um and there's and they teach you all about like strategies to do it in uh, math 135 um so the assignments themselves they were what was nice is that everybody's kind of doing them like i worked i don't think i ever did an assignment like totally on my own. I think I've always either gone to other students for help or I've gone to the tutorial center for help. I have a friend who pretty much lived in the tutorial center and was just always kind of working with the TAs that are in there and asking them for help, asking them to explain and understand and revisit a concept. Um, so that's really awesome um, to have that there and have that support. Um, but the actual assignments themselves so when you when you get it you'll write it out do it on paper write out your answers or whatnot um and then what you're going to have is a crowdmark link uh, and crowdmark is a website where you submit your assignments and so and this was like a, the thing before covid um but basically you have this link um you take pictures of your assignment or you scan it or whatever just so that it's readable and you'll submit um the pictures to the appropriate like question box in that link. Um, and that's how your assignment gets submitted and marked. So you don't, there's no physical handing in of anything. Um, and then two or a couple of weeks later, um, the, you'll get your assignment back. And so you'll get like grades available. And so you'll be able to see like what you submitted and there'll be comments on it, um, marks, whatever, like you'll see it all um, come right back. And so that's kind of the math assignment process. I, another question came in. I'm in CSBBA. How many hours per week of study on average is required? Um, so it depends on the person. Um, CS, I would say, has more hours than math just because uh, CS assignments are time consuming. Um, I would say CS assignments alone. I haven't taken CS class in a little while, but I took CS 135 and 136 in first year, um, which is the same as what CS BBA takes. I would say, how many hours? 
Um, if you combine all of your actual class time and assignment time together, um, I'd say above above 40, probably. Um, just because I'm thinking of it as kind of like a full time job. Uh, but a CS assignment itself could take between like, I don't know, maybe like. 4 hours, if you're pretty good and then anywhere up to like. 30 hours, if it's like a really hard assignment, so, um, it really depends on the assignment. Um, and I guess. Your CS knowledge, or how, how quickly you're able to grasp the concept and kind of think like a computer scientist. Um, so that's, so that's, I guess what I would say, I would, I would go for like between 40 to 60 hours a week. You're going to be studying. Um, yeah. So, another question that we have is, do you choose majors in both programs? Um, so, this is a great question because actually double degree itself is a major. So, you don't have, so what that means is in regular, like a, a regular honors math program or BBA or whatever, you have to declare a major um at some point like you have to graduate with a major but for double degree you don't have to declare anything at all and double degree is considered your major and you can graduate like without having to do anything on top of the required courses and then just filling in um the other requirements so for example you have like oh my god we have a lot of required courses but once you do all of the like required ones you have an option you have to do seven math electives six business electives and then you have four like general electives and so you can pretty much choose whatever you want you can choose the easiest ones of all of them and just do it and you'll graduate just fine um because math business or cs business is like a major in itself now you can choose to do a, an, a major on top of that or a minor or a concentration or an option um, and use your uh, those like seven math credits, six BB, six BBA credits and four electives like to do that, which is what I'm doing. Um, like, for instance, I am doing is I did a CO minor because I only needed to do two other CO classes, um, combinatorics and optimization classes, and that would get me my minor. So of the seven, I just took two more or two CO classes and got a minor. So you don't have to do any of that. Um, totally up to you. Um, let's see. Which do you find harder, the business side or the math side? That is a good question. And I've thought about it before. Um, I don't think I find one harder than the other i think they're just there's different requirements for what you have to do so in terms of content i would say that math is more challenging than bba um but in terms of like work and um and i, I guess just like work yeah i would say laurier actually like has a lot of hours that you put in to do like the projects that they have and so I would say that it's more um, challenging, like on the BBA side, in terms of actual like workload and time spent on assignments. Maybe not if you're in CS, um, because CS assignments again take 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 up time. Um, but I would say for math BBA, um, that's kind of been my split. Where Laurie or Waterloo's content is harder, and like like I can't imagine being just Waterloo math and taking like five math classes at a time. Like that sounds like insane to me. Like I don't know how anybody does that. People do do it. I know very smart people, um, but I could never. Uh, so, but Laurier um, then has like group projects. That's what they're really big on is teamwork and group work. Um, so you're going to have um, like a project for every class pretty much where you have to work in a group and write an assign or write a report and things like that. And that that's pretty time consuming as well. Um, so I would say the workload piece is more on the Laurier side, but I don't think either side like is harder than the other. Um, I think they both come with with um, 
their quirks or, or what you might say. Um, okay. Just a reminder again for anybody who joined or came late. Uh, my name is Alyssa. I'm in fourth year double degree um, math and business. Uh, and if you have questions, please feel free to submit them in the box. Um, I have some other questions that I've just been going through and this meeting is recorded. So um, if you missed anything, you'll be able to uh, go back and see it. So here's another question. Is it difficult to find international co-ops? What are most people, where are most people placed? That's a good question. So I myself haven't, um, haven't tried to get an international co-op. Um, is it difficult to find one? So Waterloo does have, um, their, uh, a lot of international postings. So if you're thinking Cali or bus, like you, you can definitely go for that. Um, obviously it's pretty high demand, I would say, and not, there's more. So most co-ops are probably going to be around the GTA and like Toronto concentrated. Um, you know, you will have co-ops, like there's options to go around Canada. So there's like Vancouver, um, and whatnot. Uh, and then there's obviously international ones as well. So there's things like Hong Kong, you can go all the way to Hong Kong, um, Cali, New York, um, things like that. Um, but they're not as many as there are Toronto postings. So it's a lot more competitive. Um, so if you, if you put in the work, I would say, and you're, you've got your resume on hand, you're trying to network, um, you have a shot, obviously, because people obviously get these co-ops. Um, but I would say that it's more common to get a co-op in Toronto. Um, and that's where my co-ops have all been, have been like Toronto. So I worked at Bank of America, um, but in their Toronto office and then BMO and then Blackberry. So it's all been like Toronto. Waterloo has a lot of co-ops too. Um, in that area, so you could choose to stay in Waterloo, but majority I would say are like GTA. Um, where will the recording? Oh, I'll just read that out loud. So, where will the recording be available and when? They're going to transcribe the event after, so it probably won't be available for another week, but it will definitely be available by the 14th of December. Thanks, Just Uh, okay. Let's see another question. What was your favorite course? What was the hardest one? Any advice on succeeding academically? My favorite course, um, I think I really liked the statistics course that I just did um, for linear SAT 372, linear modeling. Um, I found it really interesting. I found it super applicable to real life and just my own interests. Um, I really liked it. I like the prof, I like the work, I like the project. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then the hardest one was probably uh, math. I think for me, it was probably math 135, uh, just because of uh, getting used to proofs. I'm not like an expert in proofs. I'm not, it's not, I don't, it's not my specialty. So things related to proofs are always hard for me. And especially kind of the first class that I've ever taken, like just kind of learning it and being kind of scared of it and not sure of, um what to expect and then i had a bit of like a what's it called imposter syndrome where you're you don't feel like you belong you're like oh my god like i'm not like this isn't for me like i don't think i should be here and whatnot um so it was scary um but i think a lot of it was because i was kind of getting into my own head about it so my advice on like succeeding, like in that scenario is find like a group, a support group of either friends or TAs, um, and they'll help you see, they'll help you number one, learn, um, and they'll help you, uh, they'll help you learn, help you understand like how, like what works for you, what's your learning style. Um, and uh and they'll just help you with assignments as well so you'll see that it's not so bad you'll see how other people think how are you supposed to think um and i found that find that really helpful and just being organized again i'll go back to that like 
any advice on succeeding academically, stay organized. Um, super, super key. Okay. Um, oh, one other comment is that uh, the recording will be uploaded on YouTube um, and to v.qq. This way, I'm not sure what that is. Um, another question we have is, would you say that the first year was the hardest? Um, no, I wouldn't say first year was the hardest. Uh, I think it's an adjustment, but I don't think, I think, so my toughest term, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there was ever a point where I was like, like significantly having a hard time. Um, it's, I guess maybe first year, maybe, yeah. So maybe first year, like maybe 2A um, was a bit harder than the rest of the degree. Um, just because you're still adjusting the whole time, you're still like learning how to balance, you're still figuring out Waterloo and Laurier and how do I do assignments properly? Like, how do I manage finals? Like, you're still kind of learning a lot about just university in general. I don't think it's specific to the program. Um, so as you go through that adjustment, um, it might be a little hard, but then after that, it's fine. So yeah, yeah, you're probably right. First year is probably a bit tough. What is my daily schedule? So my daily schedule in quarantine. Um, so Laurier typically doesn't do Friday lectures. So I'll have lectures usually probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and I, I like having them in the morning because then I can kind of get them out of the way and, um, and just have the rest of the day to do actual assignments and work like that. But so for my last semester um, for the summer, I would spend probably between 8.30 to 12.30 um, doing my lectures from Monday to Thursday. Um, and then I would spend, so I had assignments due on Wednesdays. I had assignments due on Fridays. And so I would spend then the afternoon uh, of those days. So from, so I'd have lunch and then around like one to maybe like six, sorry, excuse me. Um, I'd be like on average one to six, I guess, one to seven, I would be doing assignments or projects. And so for the first month of classes, it was more of like from one to like four, one to five, I'd be working. Um, but then as like projects started coming up and there was a lot more work that was required, like we got into the semester and there was midterms and all of that. So um, had to study a bit more. So then it would become like one to like, nine in the afternoon or like four to nine um depending on breaks that i take um and things like that so i would do that from for monday tuesday wednesday thursday as well um and so and then i did it so that my fridays saturdays and sundays i could kind of be free and like hang out go over to the cottage like just enjoy my time and have the weekend off and so that was my personal schedule. I wanted to work really hard during the week and just spend all my hours like during the week, like get everything out of the way, get it done, like all day working, whatever. Um, so that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I could just relax. And so that that works pretty well for me. Um, I liked having the time. I know people would not want to work as long, so they would spread it all out to kind of constantly be working, constantly be doing something every day um but like little by little but i don't want to do that so i just did it all sort of during the week and then had the weekend off and so again being organized like you will be able to do that as well um let's see where can i go for help with my courses um so um I'll answer, I'll answer the question in the chat first, actually. So how was your new venture project? Um, okay. So for those of you who don't know new venture, I'm surprised you already know about new venture. Um, but new venture is a project you do in BU 111 and then continues into BU 121. Um, so one A and one B. And basically what happens is you are put into a group, um, between like three to five or six people or something. I think it's five. 
three to five people. And your the purpose of the project is to come up with the new business idea and pretty much develop it. And so like from start to finish, doing market research, doing industry analysis, like figuring out like how this pro how to make this product like succeed, and then you pitch it. Um, and then there's a huge competition in um one B and two um in one B and B one twenty one. Um, where all of the teams like pitch it and then try to um, come up with the best idea and then the winners get money. Um, and so how was my new venture project? I, I mean, it's hard. It's a hard project. You put a lot of hours into it and it's a lot of work. Um, but, uh, but I had fun. I really liked it. I had a smaller group than usual. We were supposed to have four people because it's supposed to be typically four to five, but one of our members never like showed up. And so it was always the three of us. And we we worked really hard and it was a lot of fun like getting to know like these like new people and working together with them. Um, but no, it was a it was a good project. It's it's hard. Um I will say it. it's definitely hard. People some people don't have good experiences with it. Um it's a it's a bit scary, um, but it's a good it's definitely a good intro to Laurier um, and just kind of getting you into the zone of like, OK, business, this is the kind of work that a business program is where you're you're working in a group and you're developing something um, and you're you're just developing an idea like that's that's a lot of the business program. Um, and so it's definitely a good intro to Laurier and sort of what they're all about. It's it's a fun project. Okay, another question. Are there any discussions, tutorials for the first year CS and math classes? Yes. So um, Waterloo uses something called Piazza, P-I-A-Z-Z-A. -A. Um, and basically what it is, is a separate website um, where you'll have your classes that you're in enrolled on there. And it's uh, monitored by, or it's it's hosted or whatnot by the professors and all the TAs. And you're able to submit questions just whenever you want, um, whether it's about the assignment, about the midterms, about like the final, just a general question about a lecture, like you can submit any question. Um, sometimes they're restricted for like assignment stuff. Like they obviously don't want you to give away the answer on this like public forum. Um, so they'll ask you to submit it either privately, you can submit like your ultra specific question and only the TAs and the professors will see it. Um, but the beauty of Piazza is that you submit a question, any number one, you can do it anonymously, anonymously, so nobody knows who you are submitting it. So you don't have to be scared of asking like a question you think might be silly because nobody knows it's you. Um, but number two is that you submit questions, you see all other students' questions, and students are able to answer each other's questions on top of professors and TAs also answering the questions. Um, so the response rate is usually pretty fast. Like you'll definitely like I've gotten answers like within the hour, like average response time. Um, so that's a really great forum that Waterloo like has uh, has been using for forever. Um, so they have that for all your math and CS courses. Um, they also um, I mentioned earlier there's a there's C or um, there's the tutorial center. Um, which is on campus and like how it works normally is that you're able, there's always just a TA there um, and they have like, they have a set of TAs and they are, they're on like a schedule. Um, and so whatever, they're on a schedule, there's a TA for your class there, Math 135 or 137. Um, and you can go in, ask them questions, work through the assignment together, um, whatever you want. Like I said, my friend lived in the TA's office pretty much and worked with them on all of her assignments for help. Um, you can also go visit your professor for professor for his office hours and ask him questions, him or her questions directly. Um, and I do believe the CS, CS also has a CS lab where uh, you can go in and work on your assignment and there's also a CSTA there that can come around and help you. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of resources um, for your first year uh, courses. And um, I think your second year courses as well. It might, I think it diverges a bit in third year, but 
um, definitely a lot of resources to help for your first year CS and math classes. Mm, have a drink of water. Is it for anyone who came late? I'm gonna say it again. My name is Alyssa. I am a fourth year double degree student in math BVA. Um, feel free to submit your questions in the box below the QA box. I will do my best to answer them. And this meeting is being recorded and will be posted um, sometime by the 14th of September and will also be available on YouTube. Uh, okay, let's see, are there any other questions? Um, what was my res life experience? So my residence, uh, my experience in res. So I'm not sure if any of you guys are uh, going to be living in residence um, for this first year or not, um, or if you're staying home or whatnot because it's online. Um, but residence was fun. Um, definitely a great way to meet people, make friends. Um, and I guess the biggest thing is just don't 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 feel like you're too cool to get involved with things like um, whatever activities that your don might host or even in general, like whatever activities like math orientation is hosting, um, there's really no downside to you participating. Like if you're trying to look cool or whatever, like, oh, I'm too cool for this, like you're not. Um, like everybody's just here to have fun and enjoy. Just just be happy, like just enjoy it. It's a good time. Um, so another question, what co-ops are available to double degree? So a lot. <laughs> Um, we have, uh, you use the same co-op board, I think, as math will use, um, but you can still see, like, like the co-op board postings that you'll get are usually already sort of filtered down to, like, the math kind of program, um, or the math business program, because they also, they kind of send in, they show you everything, but you can go beyond that and, like, I don't know, go steal, like, an arts kid's job if you wanted to. Um, but in terms of like specific types of co-ops, um, you could do like business analyst, technology analyst, um, just a, like a developer, obviously, uh, data science is popular. You could do project management, consulting. Um, you could find an Axi co-op if you wanted to. You, it is very flexible. Um, they're all available like you can all you can apply to any co-op you really want um yeah like it it helps to tailor like have try and make your resume like for me okay and i'll start with it so for me i have two resumes i have a resume that's more like math focused math cs focused where it's a bit more technical um and I use that resume to apply to like data science jobs, developer jobs that I'm interested in um, and things like that. Uh, but I also have a more business focused resume that kind of um, that I use to apply to like a business analyst job or um, PM job, product management job, like things like that. Um, and so, uh, so that helps because there's just so many different kinds of jobs you wanna to apply to and you wanna like stand out in all of them. Another question, did you ever feel like double degree was too hard for you? If so, what motivated you? It's a good question. Um, so I've always been, I'd say like a very like disciplined, determined person. Um, I heard about double degree when I was in grade 11 and immediately I was like, that's the program for me. Like I want to do math, but I want to do something applicable to business. So like, it was just perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. And so kind of going in, I was like, I'm going to see this through to the end. And like, I know it's going to be hard, but I kind of came prepared for it to be hard. And so even in semesters where I may have not been doing as well as I wanted to be doing like academically, I my turning point there, I think it was just to kind of remind myself, like, why am I here? Why am I doing this um, program? Like, do I like, do I like it? Like, I see the value in it. Um, like, I think it's gonna, 
like it's gonna pay off like so hugely like in like if I finish it that I use kind of I kind of just revisited like the whole reason for me wanting to be in Waterloo and like working here and studying here and being in this amazing program and so just reminding myself of that um and saying like you know what like I can do this I've made it like so far um like just keep going like things are going to be hard like things can be hard like just in general um not like double degree specific um but you made it like that far so just like you have what it takes um just keep going i know so some people can be scared sometimes about double degree and like being like oh so many people drop out like whatever those rumors are um but i will say that the reason that people drop out of double degree isn't because it's too hard but it's because they realize that I actually don't really like business. Like I'd rather just do math. So they drop out to whatever they're more interested in and like, or I guess switch programs into whatever they're more interested in as opposed to because it's too hard. And so, um, and that's totally fine. Like I have friends that have switched programs like four different times, five different times, like just because they're still looking for what they're interested in. Um, so I think that's just, that's what keeps you kind of going is you're always working, you want to be working towards something that interests you um, and that you like. So that's that's my answer for that. Okay, another question. Can product management co-op be done by first years? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't personally done a project management job or a product management job, a PM job. Um, I would say like it never like there's no downside to applying um so apply apply anyway some some jobs it, it really depends on the job like i you could be it could not be um some jobs prefer taking like first years or second years because they see it as like okay this this is like a fresh student fresh mind like they haven't they don't have like past sort of bad habits or anything we can like shape them to be exactly what we need. Um, so they'll prefer to take younger students. Um, some are would rather the student have more experience, so they would rather do that because they don't wanna spend a lot of time teaching and cultivating them. So it, it really depends. I would say apply anyway, um, there's no downside. What type of extracurriculars and projects have you done? So extracurriculars, I have been on the Quidditch team. Thank you for asking um since my first year and i was the captain last year and the captain this year um and have just been playing every single year so quidditch has been a huge part of my life um just because i heard about it in first year um and was like no way so for those of you that don't know quidditch like it's it's a sport from harry potter the the like fictional story about a wizard um and and so it was just kind of crazy to me hearing that they took this like uh, sport from a book and made it real. And so I had to go see what it was and it turned out awesome. And it was just so much fun meeting like people that weren't in my program um, and just seeing like this whole other side of Waterloo. And like, I just thought it was great. It was just a great group of people. Um, no regrets, uh, best club ever. Um, what extra projects have I done? Um, yeah, so I haven't, I'm not as proactive, I would say, as some some of my friends are, who are constantly maybe working on a side project. Um, I have friends that are so JDC is a really good uh, program, I guess, club thing at Laurier, um, where it's this huge uh, case uh, club, and they have all the different sort of they have like an HR team, like a finance team, um, whatever else teams and it's it's a huge huge like uh it's almost like a class you take and it's a case class and so you're in this group and you're working on um case analysis all the time then you go and you compete against other schools um and laurier won last year and i think they've won the year before that like it's it's a really really strong um club i would join or you you could join if you're interested in business and kind of furthering and improving your skills down that path, down that path. And you definitely make a lot of really good connections in there as well. Um, 
same. So this is kind of, yeah. So is JDCC good to participate in? Yeah. So these are all similar questions along with what I'm saying. Um, so good clubs for double degree students. JDC is definitely awesome. Um, if you can, if you're able to kind of get, get in, like, I would definitely go for that. Um, very valuable. Um, other clubs for double degrees, there's double degree club, which you're all already a part of. Um, and this past semester, they've been like super active. They did a ton of like networking events with, um, with companies. Um, they do a lot of, um, good, they do a lot of good work, um, that helps you, uh, just kind of succeed. Um, and, uh, but in terms of good clubs, find what you're interested in. So if you're interested in data science, go join the data science club. If you're interested in AXI, go join the AXI club and you won't, uh, you won't go wrong. Um, so what are some co-op jobs or works that do not require much daily communication? Uh, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean by this question. Um, if you're trying to ask, like, which co-ops um, are like minimal interaction, like with another with other people, um, I guess that's kind of a tough question because, like, in all co-ops, I think you're going to be speaking with either your manager or whoever's hiring or whoever is your like hiring buddy um just because you need to learn like what you're actually doing there and in any job like people are going to be there's going to be the training for you to learn like what your role is um what your what your expectations are what you're supposed to do um now after that maybe it won't I'm trying to think of like a situation where there would be minimal communication. I guess if there was like a job that was kind of doing the same thing every day, then I would imagine that once they trained you, if you're able to do it fine, then you would have minimal communication. But um, I think that in most jobs, like you're going to be, there's going to be new projects, new things going on. Um, and I think that that all requires like talking to other people and talking to your team. Um, and I guess maybe maybe you're asking this question because you're you're like nervous to be around sort of the full time um, employees or things like that. Um, but I would say that if if that is the case and you're kind of going to go into your first co op and you're you're like oh I'm a student like um, are they going to what's going to what's it going to be like like what's going to happen I think just remember that. This is a team that regularly takes co-ops. Um, they are expecting a student. They are not expecting a full-time like adult who has like 15 years of experience in this field and can do everything perfectly flawlessly. No, they're taking a student. Um, so they know that you're here to learn. They should know that you're like that is their role for you is to teach you about this job to see what you can do to cultivate your skills um so don't be afraid to talk to them don't be afraid to become friends with them um it, it could be great a great connection for your future career path um just to have like just a good rapport with whoever you worked with um and, and don't be afraid to ask questions i would say as well like like obviously not too many questions because you don't want to like ask the same question like four times and and sort of get stop them from being able to work um like consistently or regularly um but uh but don't but don't be afraid to ask questions like when you feel that you need to or when you feel that it's stopping you and just do it the one time and like just sit with them until you're actually sure of like that you're comfortable with the answer they gave you so that they don't you don't have to ask again later um is just a bit of advice there um, i'm gonna do okay um and just a quick question down here as well before we wrap up can we apply to laureate clubs yes you are um you're able you have access to both laurier and waterloo clubs um, so Laurier probably has like a finance club. I think they have like a realtor club. Um, 
I just haven't looked into a lot of Laurier clubs because I'm not as involved in clubs as I should be. Quidditch is pretty much my life. Um, Quidditch and orientation. Um, so, uh, but yeah, you can apply to Laurier clubs. But uh, okay, so we are almost at time. It is almost noon. Um, if anybody, does anybody have any more questions that you want to send in? Just give it another minute. Um, otherwise, I will consider this to be our wrap up. Otherwise, this will be our wrap up. Um, make sure you follow um, Waterloo Orientation and Waterloo Math um, on social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and use the hashtag um, University of Waterloo O Week uh, 20. So UWO 20 um, or orientation, sorry, not O Week. Um, and uh and just another reminder that the math dance submissions are due tonight at midnight um so please please do submit um even if it's just a clip of you doing a little part of the dance there will be prizes google home minis um it's uh please please, please submit it it's a lot of fun a uh, huge part of orientation every year um and the pink tie ceremony will be on monday um so this is also pretty big, we're going to have the Dean come in and he's going to give you the ode to the tie. Um, so just a reminder, tune in on Monday um, for the tie ceremony um, to earn your ties. Um, and that should be everything. Um, thank you guys for coming in this morning and listening to me ramble. Um, I hope it was valuable for you uh, and I wish you all very good luck. Um, in your first year of double degree.